Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to continue our Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol series by taking a look at how we'd approach painting the vehicle that's in the box. So a lot of this stuff is going to be applicable to future vehicles you might paint for that army, and if you want to know specifically why I've picked this scheme, then check back a few videos ago where we talked about two options and why we decided on going with what we went with. Now, as always, the goal when we're army painting our stuff is to get it on the table in a timely fashion, but still looking awesome. So we're not talking about doing our very best work, but we want really high impact with everything we do. So all the stages, all the materials we're gonna use, all the decisions we're gonna make, they're gonna be done with a purpose and executed well. Now let's paint. In the previous prep video, I went through a bunch of things that I was doing to the tank to get it ready for paint. But when I came to prime it, I just had another quick check over and there was just a handful more things uh, that I was going to do and I felt it would be remiss if I left them out. So on my kit uh, for the Demos Pattern Rhino, there's quite strong mold lines all the way around the tracks. Now I'm going to paint the tracks uh, on the sprue for the most part because I think it's the most efficient way of doing it so I needed to prep them so scraped off the mold line with my knife and then I've just run some extra thin plastic glue along that seam just to help sort of melt it in and then another step of prep I'm going to use an automotive primer here this is Halford's uh, grey primer I've just given the model a dusting with it just to help me see what was what if I'd missed any areas particularly what we spoke about in that prep video of where the um, the plastic's gone a bit funny and you get these, these textured areas uh, but also some of the gaps and the reason for that using this primer for that is that you can sand this primer um, and help smooth some of that out as well so I was fairly happy with most of the gaps um, I could have done a slightly better job I was a little bit disappointed in myself on certain elements but what I really didn't want to lose sight of with this is that it's a rhino it's like 35 points right like you know it's not the showpiece miniature um for our army it does so still going to take care with it and all the rest of it but don't get bogged down too much i think otherwise you'll just never get the army done now with regards to sub assemblies you can see here i blue tacked various bits on for priming um, and i've left little bits of blue tack for instance there where the dozer blade is going to connect and stuff so that when i'm ready to attach them i can peel that off and they'll be bare plastic the other thing i'm going to use when painting this tank uh, is a glove um, I'm sorry it's not a trendy black one you know so I can't use it on Instagram obviously but you're you're gonna be handling this tank more than say you would perhaps um, your normal infantry models I have got it on a cork base and Tamiya actually sell these cool like tank holder kit things um, I'm sure various companies do but for me big blob of blue tack and, and a cork plus the gloves uh, does the job and the nice thing about the demos pattern rhino is you see you've got those sort of running boards on the side they're really really handy um, to hold the model as we're trying to get uh, get around it now for the base coat just like we did the armor uh, in the infantry video we're going to base coat it using tamiya flat earth now i've thinned this about three to four drops of tamiya x20a thinner for every drop of paint uh, and I'm spraying about 25 to 30 PSI. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in our signature series, Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. I don't want to just rattle can this base layer on, although if you don't have an airbrush, by all means, just rattle can your base color till you get something like this, and then just follow all the weathering steps and the rest of it. You'll still have a cool looking tank. The Once the base color's down though, we've got a few layers there, so we're not obscuring any detail. And we can make the decision of where exactly the light source is going to come from. So above, obviously, as you saw me pointing there, we're going to suggest it's slightly from the front right as we look at the tank. What this is going to allow me to do is put some areas of light and dark across lots and lots of these panels. Um, it's, it's all part of this challenge for me of, of making the thing look like a scaled down version of a tank rather than trying to highlight this, uh, this plastic box. Which, which is what it is and one of the reasons I love the Demos Rhino is you do have all these little different panels and different changes in direction so our main color we're going to use is medium gray I've thinned this a similar amount maybe a tiny bit more and you can see here I'm moving the tank around I'm, my airbrush is staying more or less in the same orientation and what I'm doing is moving the tank around so that I bring the model into the spray of paint and what that allows me to do is without doing any masking all these different little panels were able to start bringing the paint up uh, and creating that lovely fade of dark into light. 
Now, I am not a huge fan of, of super high contrast, um, super high sort of contrast using uh, th this modulation technique. Um, I think I probably should go for more contrast than I do, um, but I often worry about it ending up looking too airbrushed and stuff. But I think, especially with light schemes like this, I think going for more contrast of light and dark at this stage. So by that, I mean having perhaps uh, a slightly smaller area of the highlight there. Um, so we move from highlight into shadow really quickly with very little sort of mid-tone. Um, it probably would look a bit more impactful on the table. But this is just something you need to find where your personal taste levels are. Um, but as a piece of advice, I, I would always say go a bit further than you think you need to do at this stage. Sort of be a bit more extreme than you think you need to be. Um, because although we're not going to do tons of stages after this, everything we do after this will dull this whole effect down. So if we start it too simple and too subtle, by the time we're finished, you may as well have just sprayed it the one colour. But I was fairly happy with uh, with how this one was coming out. And the whole top panel there, um, I'm not going to do that thing where I go around all the panel lines. Um, I would prefer just to light the top of the tank like it was one flat panel. And then we'll use things like pin washes and stuff to bring a bit of definition in there. I'm not a fan of it where you sort of highlight the cupola and then you'll highlight the top of the tank, but you'll highlight the hatches differently as if you were starting again. Um, it's just not how I like, like to do it. Um, but you must, you know, you must figure out what you like uh, and go for it. So here's where I got to. I probably added, gosh, I don't know, five to ten layers of that medium grey in different areas to build up to where I wanted to be. And I think we've got a nice, interesting looking tank. And this whole process has took me maybe 10 minutes, maybe a tiny, tiny bit longer um, to do the whole tank. But the key is just to be patient, build up the layers. Now the next stage, this is something if you've watched any of our videos, you know I really enjoy doing. We're gonna do a little bit of oil dot filtering. And exactly the same as in the infantry video, I've chosen sepia, buff, and light gray here which is a very blue gray as you can see it. And that blue is deliberate. I wanted to use a pale blue to highlight lots of the colors in this just to give it that sort of colder feel. I've got a couple of brushes. Um, I've got a bit of kitchen paper and I've got a little well there with some mineral spirits in. When we do this sort of dot filtering on a vehicle, you get a lot more out of it than you do on an infantry model. Um, you, obviously you've got much larger surfaces, but we do have to be really accurate with it. If we just smoosh it all over the surface, like we did perhaps on some of the infantry models, you, you will end up seeing those streaks as the paint dries when it's on a large flat surface in this. So we really need to focus on making sure that we draw our brush vertical, so up and down, up and down the whole time. So you can see I've put the different dots of paint on there then. I put my brush in the mineral spirits, Put it on that cardboard and you saw how much come off it. That's more than we want, right? We're not washing it on. So we touch it off on the kitchen paper to dry it off a little. And then you can see here, to get this panel done, I've had to reapply that mineral spirits three or four times, touch it off on the paper and go again, um, just to get the paint moving, but not creating a wash on the surface. And even though it's not dry, at this point you can already see this lovely subtle streak sort of effect that we're getting on the tank. Now, as I said at the start of the video, we I feel when we're army painting and we want to get something done in good time, you can't just throw absolutely everything you know how to do at the model um, and hope it works. It'll look amazing. You'll, you'll paint an incredible looking rhino, I imagine, if you do that. But it'll take you all month and then you're not getting your army done, in my opinion. And that's the whole goal is finding that sweet spot for what looks cool enough, but it's going to allow you to play with a force and enjoy the force as a whole. So it's not your show-off army, but it's still going to look really, really decent. So I'm not going to do tons and tons of weathering effects uh, on this miniature. Instead, I'm choosing to do just this oil dot filtering and a little pin wash in a bit, and that'll be enough for me. Um, we'll come back to this side in a second because I've definitely put too much of the darker colour on there, which really annoyed me. But I just wanted to take a second to say thank you ever so much um, for those of you that support us over on Patreon. Um, it's up. It's quite overwhelming the support we've been getting myself and Andy and it's it's allowing us to do all sorts of videos for you here and then each week over on Patreon as well um, he's just finished uh, Andy's just finished his series on his Necron Lord that he recently won uh, his Golden Demon uh, Silver with uh, at the recent um, uh, Golden Demon over here in the UK so 
amazing work. I know he's over the moon with that award. I know it's one he's wanted for a long time. Um, so if you want to see, I think it's a four or five part series uh, of that over on Patreon, um, then go and check it out. But the only reason we're able to do that and bring in guest artists and stuff is the support we get from you guys. So thank you ever so much. Now, as I said, I put too many of the dark dots on that side and it knocked the color back way too much. So all I've gone back in is gone back in with the buff and a lot more of the lighter blue and just added a load more of those dots and it will just bring that color up a little bit. The reason I've left a lot of this footage in is just to, to really reinforce that point that we don't want to flood the surface with mineral spirits when we're doing this technique. Um, if we do that and create washes, you're going to get washes settle in the recesses and there'll be all sorts of different uh, so be light blue in one area, buff in another area, look a bit peculiar. And you see there where there was a bit that was a bit hard to get to? Work it around by all means, but then make sure you go back over it, going up and down, up and down with the brush. And I really like using this brush. I think it's called a wedge, um, but it's just a nice soft uh, bristled brush um, that's got this sort of, yeah, sort of fan wedge shape to it Work, works really well for me for the exhausts i find on the demos kit they're a brilliant way of adding a secondary color in um, and i really like using black as a secondary color on schemes it's also nice that it happens to feature on the cloaks of the infantry models so we've given it a base coat of vallejo model color black and i know that's over a black primer but if we apply a black paint over it it gives us a more consistent finish and one that we can uh, we can go back and fix if we need to. Now, when it comes to highlighting these, these are cylinders. So the highlight's gonna run the shape along the shape of the cylinder. So if we think the light's coming down from there, it's gonna fade out as we go to either side and it's gonna create a strong line following the shape of that cylinder down the middle as the highlight. It's not gonna highlight the top half of it and then not highlight the bottom half like it would if it was say a flat panel. So all I'm using to highlight the black is scale 75 petroleum gray. I've thinned this maybe three drops of thinner to paint. Um, sometimes with certain scale 75 paints, I do find a drop of flow improver can help as well. Um, but I didn't need that with this one. And then for the highlight, I've mixed in a tiny bit of Vallejo model color pale blue. So just like I did with the pale blue oil, just to create that last uh, highlight. So you can see here, you've got petroleum gray on the left and then petroleum gray plus that little dot of blue on the right. Uh, and if we bring this in, that's it just when it's pure uh, model color black. So I think it gives it a nice bit of, you know, bit of interest to it. And then I want to treat that armor the same way I've treated the uh, sort of ivory bone color, whatever you want to call it, um, of the main armor. So we're going to do uh, some dots of the sepia, so sort of a, a dirty brown color, a couple of dots of that light gray, uh, and then a few dots of black this time. And we're going to leave out the buff. But the process itself is exactly the same. So again, working top to bottom, top to bottom, and just creating these lovely little streaks. This is gonna be a slightly longer video than normal, and I hope that's all right with you all. I've condensed it as much as I can, but there's quite a lot to go through, and I think there's definitely value in leaving some of the stages in, 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 in their entirety. But here I've gone around all of the tank, and you can start to see that lovely streaking effect um, that that oil dot filtering gives you. I absolutely love this technique it's a really really old technique that military modelers use uh, and just think it's brilliant once it's dry and that took i don't know half an hour to dry maybe once all that was good you know so it's touch dry hair dryer on it was good to go um now i'm going to spray it with a few layers of gloss varnish now i'm using vallejo polyurethane gloss here which i have to thin three or four drops of thinner to one drop of varnish but you just use whatever gloss varnish you like rattle can airbrush really doesn't matter all we're trying to do here is provide a nice smooth surface for us to do our washes over. It's got nothing to do with protecting paint or anything like that. And the wash I'm gonna choose, uh, the color I'm gonna choose to do the pin wash with is sepia again, so a nice dark brown color. We mix it in with some mineral spirits to create our wash. You'll see me do pin washes a lot, and I always make up too much, but actually this is about right for what I'm doing here. Now, the wash there, that's too thin. You can already see it starting to separate out on the side of that dish. And if we went in and did that on the model, it would look fine while it was wet, but then as it dries, you'd see it would separate out and you'd get this horrible sort of um, grainy finish on the model. So we just thickened it up a little bit. And then it's just a case of relaxing and working your way all around the model, just touching your brush to all those recesses and letting that capillary action draw the paint 
into them and provide us with a little bit of shadow, a little bit of definition, a little bit of contrast. What I tend to do is get everything I can do in the one orientation, then I'll move the tank round and do everything I can in, in that orientation. And then once that's dry, I just left that overnight. But again, you, it's probably 15, 30 minutes, something like that, touch dry, it's fine. Then I'm going to hit the whole model with a satin varnish. This is partly because I don't want a glossy finish on the model, because um, I, I want the finish to be satin. Uh, but also, we've still got quite a lot of painting to do. Um, and painting over a gloss surface is really tricky. When it came to the edge highlighting, a lot of the time with my models, I tend to do this sort of tippy tappy chipping, which acts a bit like an edge highlight, but also is battle damage, it's chipping. But something I did recently on the little March from a Crag project with that um, Strike Force Agastus uh, box was more of a traditional edge highlight. Um, it's kind of a shonky edge highlight, really. It's, it's edge highlighting going around most of the edges, not the edges that would be facing down, but most of all the others. Um, and trying to be neat, but also not worrying about if I add a few little extra scratches and things like that. It, it's just another halfway house. And I think whilst it's not my personal favourite, I do think it's really, really um, effective for making the models look good on the table. Um, you know, as I look over at this, you know, the tanks on the other desk to me at the minute, I'm able to really pick out all the shapes, all the panels on there. Um, even at that distance with, you know, with the light not being terribly good. And that's brilliant when we're thinking about gaming models. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's my reasoning for it. Um, and again, it didn't take too long, just get comfortable. Now for the exhausts, um, sometimes gimmicks are fun and worth doing. And I think things like heat bloom and whatnot on exhausts and energy weapons look cool. Uh, and they're a great way of adding a bit of extra color uh, onto a model. So I've just used a bit of uh, masking tape uh, around the black there, and now we're gonna start working on the metals of the exhaust. And it's just to, one, give me something to hold on to, but two, just prevent us getting any silver where we don't want it. I will have to go back in and brush paint that little uh, attachment point at the top in black, but it's nice and easy, it's black and then gray. For the base coat of the silver, I'm gonna use uh, Iron Warriors here, just a dark silver, um, a thick dark silver paint. And the reason I'm dry brushing it on is so that we miss all the little holes so we don't have to go back in and black many of them out. And then the top of the sort of half of the exhaust, I'm going to use a really bright silver. And I've used here um, Model Air Steel, I think it was. Um, really, really bright silver. And it's to act a bit like white does when we do appreciate. Now I'm going to load up a snake bite leather contrast paint in my airbrush. I've thinned this with a few drops of normal thinner for each drop of contrast paint. And then what I'm going to do is slowly bring that onto the top of the exhaust and bring it down the exhaust to start creating that heat discoloration. And you see that silver underneath, it's just making sure that this color really pops. If we just went straight over the, um, the darker silver, it wouldn't be as effective. Biggest tip I can give you uh, with this is to take your time, not apply it too much at once. If you see it looking even ever so slightly wet on the model, just put it down and work on another one. If you try and then blow that with air to dry or whatever, you'll shift the drying paint around and you'll get those horrible ridges, um, you know, as, it's, as it forces it to dry. Then we do exactly the same thing with Agrax Earthshade. Now Agrax obviously is a lot thinner than contrast paint. Um, I still put a couple of drops of thinner in the airbrush anyway, um, but it's a lot thinner. It's also got a nice sort of matte finish to it as well when we airbrush it, which is great. It just sort of helps dull everything down. And here I'm hitting probably half of the area that I hit with the snake bite leather. And you can see almost all that bright silver is just completely gone. So again, just taking our time, bring it onto the piece. And then for a bit of soot, I'm using Vallejo Model Color Black. It has a lovely matte finish. I had to thin this heavily, so probably five drops of thinner to paint um, to get it to just be a nice translucent uh, layer of paint, no spitting, nothing like that. And here we're just looking to get the, the top little bit of it. Now for the gold parts on the model, um, I've changed this ever so slightly from the infantry one. Um, I just wanted to give it a little bit more. Um, I think it's important. I'm base coating it using uh, Necro Gold by Scale 75. 
You can see here the first few times I didn't quite get the dilution of it right and I was having to reapply loads of it to my brush all the time to get it working. So just worth bearing that in mind with your metallics is get, get them to that nice workable level and then do a few layers of it. And then the big change was using this wash. So this is Targor Raid Shade, which is this lovely sort of brown purple mix. Um, and that's something I used to do on gold in the past. Um, now I can just do it in one color, which is fab. And then simple edge highlight using Peridot Alchemy, which is a really, really bright um, green gold color. And I think it's a, it's a lovely combo. Now for the tracks, we are going to paint them a little bit differently to your sort of um, archetypal Warhammer 40k track, which is sort of lots of metallics. Um, we're going to paint them a, yeah, more, more like that military modeling style, even if we don't do it exactly the same way. So we sponge on a dark brown, so Rhinox Hide, and then we sponge on a sort of rusty color like Mornfang Brown. And then what I would normally do is glue these onto the tank after this step, um, trim them off, you know, paint over the bits where the, the sprue's meeting it. And then once everything's on, I'd apply this wash over it. But I'm just applying it here just to show you um, the wash really, really clearly. Uh, and this is track wash. It's an enamel wash by uh, MIG. So we thin that with a little bit of mineral spirits and then just wash it over. Now, I really don't like headlights on these tanks. I've never have liked them on these models, but I quite like the surround of the headlight. I think it gives you a nice bit of real estate. Um, so the way I tend to paint them is as if they're sort of this kind of steampunky old brass type thing that would then, if you pressed it, would somehow illuminate. Um, so all I did was base it into cave metal and then wash it with an oil wash called turquoise lights. It's sort of a bit of verdigris. It's, it works for me. It might not be your cup of tea, but I kind of like how that goes. And then very, very quickly, the models come together. Um, because the armor's pretty much that one color, bit of gold on the trim, the exhaust had that lovely bit of interest. I've done the dozer blade, as you can see, exactly the same as I did the tracks. Um, there's very, very little uh, left to do on the model. I'm going to do a little bit more on the tracks and the dozer blade here using uh, a metallic pigment. This is called dark steel. Now you can apply it in a variety of ways. Um, a slightly neater way of applying it would be using either a clay shaper tool or something like this cotton bud. And you can sort of rub it on and catch the edges. The way I like to apply it is I get some on my finger and I just rub it over the model. So I guess you're kind of dry brushing, um, but just using your finger. And I love the way it picks the edges up. I love the the effect it gives you. And if you're wondering about the durability of this, um, I did this on that uh, White Scars Spartan uh, over a year ago now, and that's been all over the place, in and out boxes all the time. And they still look absolutely fine on that tracks. Um, so I'm not concerned about that from a, a gameplay point of view. Um, and if you do need to tidy any of the areas up, you're just going with a dry brush and winkle it in there and, and get it where you want it. Um, but as I said, very, very quickly, the tank comes together. And that's exactly what you want. You know, there's, there's, we said at the start of the video, we want to do just a few things, but we want to execute them well and accurately. And I think the end result is, is really lovely. It's got, for me, it's got enough of that grim dark vibe that I enjoy, you know, when I think of Warhammer and how I want my Warhammer to look, but I quite like, it's, it's still quite neat and tidy and really, really easy to read all the different bits of detail, uh, on the model. Um, I was really up and down with painting this. I was really happy at one point, then I was a bit miffed. And then at the end, it really, really came together. Uh, and actually, yeah, very, very pleased with how it came out. Little things like the candles. And when we do the wrap up video for this combat patrol, I'm gonna go through things like candles and purity seals and, and bits of bobs that are specific or quite specific to this army and just how we can do them. But just that little bit of extra color that we got in them, um, the green lenses on the weapons, it was enough just to give the model that little extra boost um, to stop it looking unfinished. Um, and I find if you do use a very, very limited range of colors, which I have on this tank, sometimes it can look a bit unfinished rather than simple, um, to, in my eye anyway. And that's not what I want, right? I want, ultimately, I think we all want, when we put our army on the table for our opponent to go, oh, that's a cool looking army, nice one. And you move on. Um, and you've got to like it yourself as well. So as I say, I hope some of the things I've used in this video have been helpful to you that you think you can apply to your own projects. It's been lovely to see so many of you commenting, oh right, I've bought a sister's combat patrol, I'm going to have a go at it. Um, I get the feeling combat patrol is going to be a bit of a thing 
um, with the new edition of 40k coming up so I want to continue these series because I'm really enjoying them um, the next one we do for the sisters will be addressing all the sort of penitent type stuff so the penitent engine the arco flagellants uh, stuff like that so flesh and and bits and things like that hazard stripes all sorts of fun um, and then I say we'll do a little wrap-up video so if you've got any questions about what I've done pop them down in the comments I will get back to you as soon as I am able thanks ever so much for the support as ever Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.